March 1st, St. Albinus, Bishop. St. Albinus was of an ancient and noble family in Brittany, and from his childhood was fervent in every exercise of piety. Having embraced the monastic state, despite his parents' disapproval, he shone a perfect model of virtue, taking upon himself all the humblest offices and disciplining his flesh by every kind of mortification. In brief, he lived as if in all things he were without any will of his own, and his soul seemed so perfectly governed by the Spirit of Christ as to live only for him. In the year 504, at the age of 35, St. Albinus was chosen abbot of his monastery. St. Fortunatus, his first historian, compared the monastery at that time to a garden rendered beautiful by the most exquisite, most varied, and most fragrant flowers. Twenty-five years later, divine providence gave the abbot to the entire region as bishop of anger. A day did not pass without his instructing his people, for he believed that the soul needs daily nourishment just as imperatively as the flesh. Many Christians of his diocese have fallen away into slavery through the invasions of the barbarians. Our saint used every resource available to him for their redemption. To the graces of charity from which his people benefited were joined those deriving from his public miracles. He resurrected a young child, and when one of his servants died during his absence, those who carried the man to his grave were unable to lower him until the bishop arrived to give the final benediction. He established and restored measures of ecclesiastical discipline through the Third Council of Orleans, convened through his influence over King Chalbert, son of Clovis, who greatly respected his opinions. In brief, he was inflamed with a holy zeal for the glory of God in all aspects of life. Honored by all, he was never afflicted with vanity. St. Albinus died after making a long journey, which he undertook to consult St. Caesarius, Bishop of Arles, concerning matters of episcopal government. He had been the benediction of his diocese for twenty-one years. He died on March 1st in the year 549. He is often represented preaching in the Episcopal pulpit or curing the sick, or holding chains while commanding prison doors to be opened.